All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to open the meeting. Second. All right. So motion by Paul, second by Amy. And I'll roll call it, Paul. Yes. Amy. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. And in attendance, Amy Fiden, Paul Benjamin, David Phil. And today is the 14th of March. And this is the Finance Committee meeting, and this meeting is being recorded. Um, as I mentioned, I got to leave at 6:20, so let's get rolling, and hopefully, Shardul can join us. Uh, Andy will not be here today. So, uh, Linda. Well, uh, Joan is ready to go first. We, you were going to do the benefits and insurance and the debt budgets, and school got put off till next week. So, um, could be a short meeting. Uh, the budget, I mean, the benefits and insurance are on page 49 of the budget book. And uh, Joan is prepared to go on through the hit, hit the highlights of that budget. It, I like just for the record, real, real quick. Shall I start with the retirement as well? That's fine. Okay, so I'll start with the retirement. Um, that one had a substantial increase. Um, retirement assessment is based upon what the Hampshire County retirement system has come up with for their appropriation required for the budgeting of their the OPEB for the Hampshire County retirement. And their amount was 34 million 164 178. Then they take our estimated or aggregate salaries as of September 30th. So for us, that's calculated on the 2023 salaries for the FY25 appropriation, which is what we're budgeting for now. And our salaries actually showed about a 20% increase over the FY24 appropriation. And then they look at our salary amount and make that as a percentage of all of the towns involved, which is how we ended up at this number of 2 million. We actually got the discounted rate of 2,140,000. That's how we arrive at that. I hope my explanation makes sense. Any questions on that? Uh, no, no, but I just, I just think we should note that Chardul has joined the meeting. So we have four members. Okay. And I just for the, to be clear on this, these are all, this is basically a fixed cost. We don't, you know, it, it is what it is. We don't, we can't right. say, oh, we're not going to, you know, budget that. It, it is what yeah. this, the formula says, it is, right? It is what it is. Just wanted to let okay. you know how it's arrived at. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. Sure, Wait. Amy. Um, so you said it's a 25%, our salaries went up. It was a 25% increase 20. on salaries? 20. 20. Mm -hmm. Now, Approximate. That would that be a lot of it due to our increases from the uh, union negotiations or would that be the new hires, a little bit of both? What is a standard year to year increase that we've been doing? Most, most years it's between, I'm going to say four and seven. Okay. Seven's the average. Okay. Um, we did have very large increases due to union contracts for FY23, and that's where we're seeing those numbers from, okay. is FY23. Um, we won't see that big of a jump for FY, I don't think, for 24 and 25, but that remains to be seen. Um, so there, and just individual contracts, just and new hires, just a, a combination of everything. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, health insurance is the next one I'll go over. Um, on that, I take the amount of people enrolled in the insurance at the time I'm coming up with a budget, which would have been in December. And everything I looked at online, um, probably I think indicated a 12% to 14% nationwide, but our trust is always lower. So I was conservative with a 10% increase over last year. Um, they actually came in at an 8% increase but I reduced by 1% because we I originally had requested uh, 1 million 515 and we did reduce that to 1 million 500,000 based on, but I didn't go the 2% because I knew we would have additions because the state is on um, their uh, mass health plan. They're finally going back and reviewing and seeing 
who is eligible for our insurance and they're kicking them off and they're going to be coming on board ours. So just in the past week alone, I've added two families and two individuals. So that's why I wanted to keep that 1% out of that discount. So that is how we arrive at those numbers. Any questions on health insurance? Okay. Um, unemployment insurance, we're actually decreasing because we do have um, funds set aside in stabilization. So uh, last year we had credits, which run against the about 30,000 we had in cost. So we actually stayed about level. Um, life insurance doesn't change. That's a small number. I won't go through that. And our other number is Medicare which changes not only with the salaries, but also if grants come in, every wage is, is subject to Medicare. So road jobs, grant money, raises, it all comes into account. And we actually came up short in FY23 budget by $25,000. Um, Joan, Joan, just a question on that. You, you said all the wages. Does that include the police detail time? Is it that, includes every that? wage, every wage. If, if departments get grants, which is great, they get people, they get more money, that is also all wages are subject to the Medicare tax. So what I've tried to do over the years is I don't base it on what I'm assuming the budget is because there's so much that's not included in the 01 budget. So I try to base it on percentages from year to year, what I see. Fortunately, the last year or two, that's been real tough. So kind of trying to do that again this year and, and erring on the side of caution. Um, and then those are all of the budgets that I budget for. So that, that was a good point. With David, so if that is a big increase because of the Route Nine um, and all the details, and you said that was we were old, we were short by twenty five thousand. Right. So when all the details go away, it's that not, should that's not just the road details though. No, because I don't know when what a contract settlement is going to be, or when someone's going to. Sometimes there are raises. I have no clue about. I can't estimate that. It's it's a and like I said, if there's grants and there's a lot of yeah. grants that people get, and they it's usually dealing with wages more than anything when we get grants. Mm -hmm. So it's something we don't budget for grants, but it hits the Medicare. So I don't want to say it's totally the road detail, mm. but when the road detail when the Route Nine goes away, yes, we should see a bit of a decrease in the Medicare, hopefully. Yeah. And I. I mean, I assume when we apply for grants, we can't include the kind of administrative and or this this cost in the in the grant. More often than not, no, it's very rare. Because it's very specific. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some, right. Sometimes, but mostly not. Okay. The only time they really usually will add to it is maybe if it's FEMA money. Okay. They kind of look at all that, but that's about right. it. Okay. Right. Well, grants are still a net gain to the town anyway, so. Absolutely. Small small price to pay. Right. Okay. So any other questions could you, on those? No, but could, could you just do, is there a short and easy explanation, the difference between the retirement and the OPEB? Yes. I'm going to let Linda handle that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, just, just a quick refresher. The retirement are, are the actual re retirement pay, like such as your social security or how much you get from that. It's it's for by reason of your uh, retirement based on salary. The OPEB are what's called other. It's it stands for other post employment benefits. So it covers the benefits that go along with the uh, retirement, which are uh, primarily more health insurance. Okay. And um, what's the other? Uh, no, Some life insurance. The life, the life insurance. Yeah, those are the two amounts that are covered for retirees. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. That was right on the money and and uh, brief. 
Thank you. <laughs> the, the OPEBs, while we're while we're on the benefits, I'd want to remind you that we uh, you have asked about uh, the merits of continuing on the OPEB plan that we have, and we have arranged to have. Um, our OPEB, uh, our financial advisor and our OPEB auditor, our, I don't think he's called that actuarial, come to uh, present to finance committee and select board on the 20th, which is next Wednesday night at 630. Okay. Thank you. All set with Joan? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you. Enjoy okay. your day. Too. Okay, David, I'll try and get you through the deck before you have to leave. Um, okay. That's on page 48 of the budget book. Uh, the uh, To go right to the difference, uh, and I can do a review of the, the budget, but the difference between FY24 and 25 is due exclusively to the debt exclusion amount that we added by reason of the uh, the new votes were that which this year since the uh, um, which this year were the uh, school renovations. So though, because um, um, Amy, you mentioned it, one of them you wanted to talk about it because it went up by two hundred sixty five thousand um, dollars. It, what also happened is when you go to the revenue side, when you look under our taxes, one of the line items there are, is uh, for covers debt exclusion, and that number increased by the same two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. So it's not the uh, the the pay the burden for payment of that portion of the debt that uh, that we is due to debt exclusion amounts is. Uh, is directly attributable, uh, directly added to taxation and is a separate line in our revenues. So we wouldn't say if we were to move that down or spread the debt over further to bring that number down, we'd also be bringing the revenue down and there's no benefit to doing that. This is pretty much on the same uh, timeline for repayment of the school as was represented at the fall town meeting uh, when the uh, taxpayers first uh, voted it through. So so I know that that was the primary question. Do you want me to still run down the uh, explanation of the debt and interest? Because the other is exactly as it was the year before. We have our principal portion of our debt as it's uh, as it ages. The principal portion goes up and the interest goes, um, yeah, and the interest goes down because we paid off more of it. And that's true on the, both the bonds and the uh, long-term bonds and the short-term notes. Those are the two kinds of borrowings that, that we have. We put them into bonds and we're paid over uh, a longer period of time, usually 20 to 30 years. And then the short term are the bands, the BAN, uh, bond anticipation notes, which are uh, we borrow each year and we pay them off 12 months later. And then we borrow again um, for any amount that, uh, that we need to continue rolling over as additional amount. We don't just roll over the full amount, we actually do a substantial pay down. If you see uh, what the bottom line is there for, uh, let, if you look at 24, for example, total debt and interest paid is one and a half million. If you go up to the principal, you can see that we're paying off a million dollars of principal between the short term and the long term each year. So when you see the short term one is almost 400,000 there at 390, what that means is when that ban comes due, we're paying off 390,000 of the principal then borrowing the balance again and adding any in any new votes that happened that per first year. The goal of the way we've been uh, structuring the debt and interest is to keep it as even as possible from year to year, unless the finance committee, as has happened a few times in the last few years, has specifically authorized increasing it by another fifty or hundred thousand dollars, which is a lot, which what we do with that additional amount in the budget is it goes directly to pay down more principle so that we're actually borrowing net less going into the next year. Are there any questions on? I have a board? question. Mm -hmm. So what do you foresee right now? Um, and, and so we're not doing an additional amount like we have been doing. So that's great. But what, what do you, um, just looking at this, what do you foresee us having available to borrow? How much to borrow for the fall? Do you have any idea? What we try and do, what we try and do is keep the uh, keep the short term principal what we're being able to pay down and then what we use again on an even keel. 
um, we, because the interest has been going uh, up, we've had to, that, that has cut into our ability to borrow more. So this year, when you see that in 24, we're paying off 390,900, that means that we, that, that easily allows us to borrow another 400,000 or so. Okay. In the fall, if you decide uh, there are various things that's going to, that are going to come before you, uh, I don't know whether this is next meeting. There've been we've been talking about some other needs or how to fund some of the articles that have come up, and um, um, which, uh, specifically one of the DPW ones that has a two hundred fifty thousand um, dollar our our portion of a grant that would be a million dollars. Uh, where would that money come from? We don't have 250000 left in free cash anymore after the 750 goes into the budget. That's a possible candidate, candidate for doing a short-term borrowing now. What would happen then, Amy, is if we borrow that 250000 and we say, well, we're going we're gonna to borrow that. We're going to put that in short-term borrowing. That's that much less that we um, would be able to allocate towards short-term borrowing in the fall without another increase to the budget. Um, so... Um, it, it's a balancing act. So uh, I don't know that we're ready to, or th that's still in the early stages, David. We want to take that up on a, on a later meeting. I mean, yeah, I think until we have funding, funding sources for the tanks and the, um, the culvert and, and whatnot, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves discussing it. So. What? Did I miss something? Are you asking me anything? No, I, I lost all oh, okay. there for a second, right. so I wasn't sure. Right. Okay. No, good um, report. Thank you. All right. So that that's that on that budget. And I think that, um, the, as I understand it, the only remaining budget to go over is uh, that Annie is anxious. Annie, uh, uh, school superintendent is anxious to come and talk with you next week. Okay. and uh, explain that one. I actually won't be able to be at that uh, meeting, but I think that's um, that's fine. She's got that budget well under control. And um, what more, Carolyn? Where do we go from here? Um, we do need to be, as far as the budget, are you going to reach a point where you need to do what I, can, what I call the wrap-up mm -hmm. of, okay, we are going to approve everything as per the town administrator's budget, or we've got these tweaks or changes that you then would like to discuss um, and perhaps vote on. So you've all been pretty quiet about how you, how you want to be handling any of this up until now. So we're not sure where you're going with it, but at some point you really, you need to get this to the select board with your recommendations. So I was just looking at the calendar here. We have until the 18th, Carolyn, in order to do the warrant. Is that correct? We have to the 18th for the wording for the ladder truck for Jessica. So I okay. have to advertise a week before town meeting, but I need to get, uh, I need legal has been getting the warrant, but as we get more specific, it's more helpful to have legal. So, you know, the, the 18th is a good, a good, you know, deadline date. Okay. So basically we've got a chance to meet four more times. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So ideally and let me know if this sounds all right, but we'll meet with Dr. McKenzie next week. And then I think the following week, um, and at next week's meeting, we can discuss if anybody wants to bring anybody back, any of these department heads to, to, to talk about any issues they see with, with the budgets. And we can have that conversation with, since Linda will be here the following week. Um, so yeah, I, I would say Dr. McKenzie next week, let's see if we wanna to talk to anybody, any of the department heads again, the following week, we can kind of have a wrap up and just go through the numbers and see where we stand on it. And um, I guess if everything's all set, we could even vote that evening on recommendations. But I think uh, th that leaves ourselves another possible two meetings that we have available so that we have plenty of time to work on things if need be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I will not be available on the 28th. So. Okay. Let's see. Is there a select board meeting the 27th? I won't I won't be available the 27th either. Um oh, okay. but I will be available right. the following week on Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Uh is everybody around the 21st next week? Yes. I am. Amy said yes. Sure, are you around the next uh, week? 
Yep, he's shaking his head. Okay. Yep. Um, I should be. All right. So, like, yeah. So let's let's plan on that just to go over the schools and kind of see if we want to call anybody back, and then we can maybe schedule the following week. If uh, Paul, I'm sure sure you want to be here for that discussion. Yeah. So maybe we'll skip um, the skip week after week. next, and then and then go back, go to the fourth, maybe. I, yeah. That's the only one that I um, I have a chamber event, the Amherst chamber event on the fourth. Yeah, see, Margarita Madness. Mm. Uh, um, we do Wednesday need, the third. That that's fine with me. I I need to duck out, so Paul, I'm yeah. gonna leave you in sure. charge. Are you available on the make third? If everybody else is. Okay, I am. Yep. Okay, thank so, you. All we right. Could Good night, set everyone. This up. We could always set this up for next week. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, it's probably inappropriate for my usual. Too soon for my usual uh, uh, motion. So, um, sure. So right now, the, for meetings, email? can we just double check what we have for meetings yes. then? We have, as far as I know, we have the twenty first next week, and right mm -hmm. now we're talking about having the school there. And perhaps a discussion, although it hasn't been finalized or announced in a in a uh, posting yet, we're thinking about having a discussion about just generally, do we have anybody we want to call back because we have some questions that we need to hear from them directly um, if we can't get the answers some other way, okay? Um, and then at that point, we're going to try and set up a meeting for the fourth does not work. Uh, there's a conflict. So we, I would really like to have everybody at this next meeting, the next meeting, which would be discussing overall the budget so that we either want to move forward with it or if we have some things we have to hold back, we would then you know have to deal with it. So is everybody available on the 4th? The 4th? No. No. The 11th. The 3rd. I'm sorry. Wednesday the 3rd. The 3rd, yes. Okay. Shardul? Could be, yeah. I don't, I don't have anything. Uh, right. are, you, are you saying Wednesday the 3rd? Yes, would that, that's that's a as a possible board. meeting. Does that work? Black board meeting. Black board meeting. So we can't have use of the uh, Zoom, then, right? Well, you wouldn't have you. You wouldn't. It, it, you can do it without me, but you wouldn't have me. And if any of those department heads that you wanted to right. speak with have, might have to be at a select board meeting. Let's right, say so. the eleventh for voting. Right. Okay. Is that is the eleventh good for you? Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. Voting on budget. Final. Final vote. Final voting on budget and warrant. So everything will be completed by the eleventh, right. but it gives us time to at least talk, or even if we had to do a meeting, like just to get information, we can always watch it after. But no votes will be taken until the eleventh. Right. Is that cool? Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I still would love to have a meeting on the second or third, or well, the third doesn't work, the fourth doesn't work. Is anybody available on the second? Yes. Well, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I think if we can get everybody here next week, because I don't know about Andy, and you know, we really don't know about Andy and uh, okay, Dave. All right. Well, let's discuss it on the 21st. We'll just see if we can squeeze one more meeting in if we need it. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think we should have like a calendar of possible things yes. okay. and we can figure that out. Okay. All right. And, uh, and I, I have one more request. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, when you do the um, um, agenda for us, would you mind putting on the minutes? Because I'll put bring the minutes for the next meeting. Okay. Amy, which dates will you have? Well, let me try to put it together and I'll send it to you. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Some. So item three on our agenda, we're not doing anything tonight on that. It was a May possible. Do we have anything to discuss there? I'm sorry, Paul, I didn't hear you. Item I'm... three on tonight's agenda is review, review of the town meeting warrant. So that is up to you. Uh, the reason we're listing that is because typically the finance committee does uh, like to, to, throughout a meeting, might pick an article. Yeah. And this is for open meeting law to. Right, make. right. So of course. But there's course. nothing that. We don't have that, anything out that we needed to talk about tonight, as far as I can tell. So uh, unless somebody else has a reason to do that, we'll pass right through number three. Any unforeseen uh, items? 
that were in the last 48 hours. Anybody? Okay, so then I think we're uh, through the agenda tonight and we can have a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Great. Let's take a roll call. Amy? Yes. Thank you. Shardul? Yes. Okay, and myself, yes.